I hope you enjoyed learning about Oracle. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I hope you enjoyed about mm, mm, this video. Hello everyone, what's up? And welcome back to Hello Mendix. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at our new external database connector and using it to connect to an Oracle database running on Amazon RDS. The new connector is available to use in Mendix 10.6 and above, and it's got some amazing features for us to explore. So to begin, we're going to search for the connector inside of the marketplace. We're going to open it up and hit download. The only thing you need to configure is the individual connections themselves. The module itself requires no setup or installation. The only configuration you need to do is the individual connections to external databases. And yes, you can have multiple connections inside of the same application. As always, when using a new connector, make sure to head over to the documentation and make sure you have a thorough understanding of how it works. So to add an external database connection, all we have to do is right click on our module or inside of a folder, if you would like, inside of the App Explorer. Um, we're gonna look for add other and right at the bottom here, we have external database connection. Now this first field, the name field, uh, this is purely a name for the connection. It doesn't matter, it's not verified against anything. So we can name it whatever we want. This is a Oracle DB connection running on Amazon RDS. So it's an Oracle database and we are going to use the connection details option. You can also use the connection string if you are familiar with JDBC connection strings, uh, that might be the option for you. But I have all the details here, so I'm going to use the details. For the host, um, this is the endpoint uh, of your database. So mine is coming from the Amazon console. Port is always 1521 for Oracle, I believe. This database name is the actual SID or the database name of your uh, live uh, environment. So it needs to match. Exactly. I just left mine as database when I created my DB. So I just leave it at that. Username and password. These are your user for the database um, and they need to be correct. Now we can test the connection and if it's successful, we're going to see a green message over here. There we go. Connection successful and we can save it. After saving the connection details, Studio Pro is going to automatically create a new query and open it in the editor for you. You can add a query at the top of the editor over here, as well as delete unwanted ones. So for our SQL query, I'm just going to create a simple statement to select all the fields from the admin.customers table. You can add parameters over here if you would like to add in substitute data from your Mendix application to filter out unwanted records, but I'm just going to return the whole table and we can actually run the query here directly inside of Studio Pro. So we can see here in the response data that it is actually um, showing real data retrieved from the database. Now this is just test data, so it's not uh, any sort of worry about that, but we can actually use this response as is and this will generate a table for us in our domain model based off of the data structure which we get back. I am just going to rename this so that it is not all caps. And we can say save query and create entity. So now if we go into the domain model, you can see our new table here has been created. Now let's use this and actually display that data on a page. So if I go into home web, I'm going to add a data grid, but I'm going to add a data grid too. And we're going to populate this using a data source microflow. So for microflow, I'm going to just create a new one. Call it DS get Oracle data. And we're going to go into it. Finally, to access the data in your application, we need to call the query external database action inside of the microflow. This microflow is connected to the data source of a data grid too. Um, so I'm just going to insert an activity and I'm going to search for external query external database. 
And all you have to do is select the database and then the query that you created. Now at this point, you can enter in any parameters that you would have liked um, and also just give it a good name as always. All right, remember to set this as the return value and then I can run my application and we can go have a look. So I can say view app and we can go have a look. So once the page loads, we can see the data is coming from the database. We have 319 records here. And because this is the data grid too, we have some awesome sorting options um, when you click on the customer ID as well as searchable fields. That's all for this video. And I hope you enjoyed learning how to use the new external database connector along with AWS RDS and Oracle. Until next time, I'm Ryan Mucky, and this is Hello Mendix.